Well, I welcome everybody then. We'll see, uh, see if anybody else come, comes along. Yeah, I thought Robert, Amy Stanton was here. Michele. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I, I don't want to go back and do a whole long uh, review of the, of the introduction. Um, just, to, just a reminder that this is the, the book of Proverbs is part of the third section of the Tanakh. Uh, part of the the writings or <laughs> could you beam the whole the holy writings uh, and um, it's a series of series of of, of teachings and uh, we you, you leave it up to the reader or the student as to which oh here's John okay morning John um, as to which uh, in in which particular uh, role we want to see uh see both the speaker or the writer and uh and 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 we the readers uh whether it's as parent to child whether it's teacher to student or or disciple or whether it's all um in uh, if not all but mostly in uh allegory uh, and parable relating to um uh uh, people, it's it's not what we call particularistic. It's not specifically for Israel. Uh, it's more universal. It's more humanity, human beings, uh, in their relation to each other and their relation uh, relation to God. There's very very little specifically Jewish or Judean or Israelite uh, reference. Uh, even though there, there's no question that uh, the 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 authors were writing from an Israelite or Jewish perspective uh, and the context, but and, and the, we assume that they they were assuming that the audience would only be in the Israelite or Judean uh, community. They certainly never thought that thousands of years later we would. Uh, people in, in all of the Western religions would be would be looking at this material yeah, be, and being, be being inspired by it. Um, so the the uh, the, the structure, uh, for the most part, is in the biblical poetry type of structure, which has a lot of what we call parallelism. Is whether it's verse one and then verse two that modifies or clarifies uh, the same thing that verse one did, or sometimes it's a part A and a part B of the same of the same verse. But we see a lot of you might call it redundancy, but that's the that's the fun and exciting part is 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 what's a little what's a little different in those in the the two phrases um and um and what we can what we can derive derive from them um these are all uh statements of the the some of the hebrew words that we encounter are chokhmah which is usually translated as wisdom um seichel you you might remember from the yiddish you might know seichel you know that's co more common sense uh, approach to life there's uh, Bina or Tevuna, which is uh, more translated as understanding or discernment. Uh, and, the, the, and then there's Musar, which the translation uh, or at least the inference that we're using when we encounter that, that term Musar is that, that, that that's the entire ethical tradition um that's what the legacy if you will that has been that has been transmitted and 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 passed down uh both or through all of those relationships that i was talking about the whether it's parent to child whether it's uh rabbi or teacher or sage or elder to the younger or to the student or the disciple or indeed whether it's knowledge and uh, because of a knowledge of God or a fear of God or reverence of God. This is the wisdom. This is the the self-understanding and self-confidence that each of us might have. 
Okay, so that's that's what I want just want to get into it just in 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 the background um, uh, a reminder of, of what we talked about two weeks ago. We got as far as verse six uh, mm -hmm. in in chapter one. Um, so we, we'll we'll continue there. Um, this is not necessarily like the Saturday morning Torah group where we'll where we'll stop for every particular every particular sentence. But on the other hand, I, I do want to divide uh, divide some of the uh, uh, the thoughts up into two or three verses at a time, or maybe a little bit longer, uh, in the way that some of the commentators have have done that. Um, so it doesn't really matter which translation you might be looking at. Yes, Grace, please. I didn't get the chapter. I apologize. We're in chapter one. We just got started. Oh, so chapter one, we and we'll be starting with verse seven because we got we got through six. We got through six last time, which is which is primarily an introduction uh, or a prologue, if you if you will. Um, and then verses seven, eight, nine together. Verse seven is frequently just quoted as the um, as the motto, if, if you will, or the the theme of the entire book of Proverbs. So, um, would would someone read seven, eight, and nine, please? And then we'll see if we have any major differences in translation, and then we'll see what we can learn from it. I have the King James, if you want it. Um, that's sure. good good as any seven is the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction one eight my son hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother one nine for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck okay um Ooh. Anyone have a, a, any major changes or discrepancy yeah. in translation? Yeah, I've got Go a list of, about their throat. You know, I mean, there's um, not in seven, but um, you know, it just feels different uh, in the Jewish study Bible. Nine. What do you mean feel that it feels different? I have a different thing from JPS. Okay. Well, what, the, what's the JPS then, Maury? JPS is one seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Pretty much the same. One yeah. eight. Hear, my son, the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. It's pretty much the same. But then one nine. For yeah. they are a graceful wreath for your head and a necklace for your throat. Yeah. That's what Ricky's yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so go back to go back to seven. All right. Which I as I said is frequently is frequently uh just knocked out as the um the 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 primary theme, if you will. Um, the the old translation is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and discipline. Okay. All right, so you you tell me. It's what is that? What what is Pearl. that? What is that? Oh, okay. And, and again, so let's address it because we've done it sometimes on the Saturday morning group too. What does it mean the 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 fear of the Lord, the fear of Adonai? Sure, just go 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 ahead, Lori. Go ahead. And I'm I've been thinking about this, and I think we can in our civil in our traditions we can decide that fear is more. Um, awe and respect um, for the authority mm. and the, you know, giving due authority. Um, and it's not being afraid. It's being awestruck or being uh, true to. And the Lord, I think we interpret how we interpret 
God, which is different for different people, I guess. So the fear of the Lord is acting in such a way, what they're saying is act in such a way that you um, are supportive of, of the values and ethics and laws of the Torah or of God. So so fear of the Lord is, is actually a, a positive mm -hmm. rather than a negative. It's something that draws you closer rather than that that pushes you away? I think so. I'd like to think so. Ooh. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. I think that we can put the comma here in different places. We can Ooh. say the all of Adonai is a uh, the of the all of Adonai is the is the the Rashid, the beginning, the most important. Then there is a comma there, and uh, the knowledge and the wisdom and the discipline, the bad guys uh, have contempt for. And then it's we can say, excuse me, and, uh, interesting, interesting. Okay, does it? And then we can say because again, it it, yeah. it it shows in the Hebrew, but there's no, uh, you know, there's no punctuation there, but in the, the grammatic. So, so she's saying the fear, fear of the or awe of I don't know, of the, that's that's the bottom line, right? Right. That's the foundation, mm -hmm. and then she's adding knowledge mm -hmm. along with. Wisdom and well, I have a translation here of uh, discipline, mm -hmm. actually for Musar. But uh, you know, I like the word legacy. But that's but um, she's adding the knowledge to those three that are that are scorned, that are rejected by those who if or, or put it the other way, if those those who do reject those three goals. Are considered fools. And then the other way we can see it is the awe or the fear of God is first knowledge, second uh, wisdom, and third discipline. The, those, those are the yeah. It, uh, again, if and, and thank you. I th I think that that's that's the. Um, what should we say? That's pedagogy 101. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's edu you know, educational theory 101. That even, even though this um, uh, at, at verse eight, it says, Bene, it says, my son, we still can see this that if in an educational way, mm -hmm. you know, here's how you find reverence for or awe for God okay. by, uh, you know, by learning these other things. Sure, that's good too. Mm -hmm. I like that. You know, and again, the beauty of this, of this literature, the reason that it's been around for so long is because, you know, the, ours is not the first, it's probably not even the first on Zoom, but ours is not the first study group that that has ever looked at the book of uh, Mishlei, the book book of Proverbs through the hundred through the hundreds years, or so. Okay, um, so if if then look at look at eight at, at eight. There's a difference between what they what uh, again different translations the instruction of your father and the teaching of your mother now. Those could just be synonyms, or they could be saying that we learn different things from different parents. Yeah, different things, different parents. Who is that, John? Yeah, I think yeah. we live different. We learn different things from the my our fathers and mothers. Yeah, I uh, agree with exa that. Example, example. Well, my my mom teach me love and understanding and and uh 
like if I got wound up on something, just put it one ear out the other and and just, you know, give love out. And my dad taught me how to be strong and defend the family, uh, you know, with a lot of discipline and, you know, stuff, uh, things that a man should be doing, you know, take responsibility. So that's a couple of things, I guess. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Any any anybody else on that? Go ahead, Lori. I'm thinking there's the we're we're reading ancient text and there's the assumption that women are in, uh, intuitive and men are intellectual, you know, and so they're saying your father is correcting you and guiding you on this path, and your mother is giving you the confidence and security. I'm basically agreeing with, with you, but um, the your mother is underneath giving you, at your mother's knee, you're learning your instincts, you're learning your heart. And I don't agree with that interpretation, but I think that's what they're trying to say. Ricky, please. Yeah, I see that um, men teach you how to get along in the world, the father, and the mother teaches you how to get along with people. I agree with that. Oh boy, that's why I don't. <laughs> okay. Um, Rabbi Miri. Um, what I see here is, you know, this is the parallel. You know, do that of the father and do that of mother. But for the father, he says, listen. And for the mother, he said, don't let go or don't mm -hmm. leave. It also have value what mama says. Do not reject, yeah. Right, right. And there's also a difference uh, not only in the verb, but in the content. Yes. Okay. The father, the father teaches um, uh, mus musar, that, that word that we've, uh, you know, again, the, some of them is is translate is a discipline. Some of it is legacy. Some of it is ethics. Um, and uh, uh, or or was it John? You know, or said said that uh, or who said you know that uh, getting along with the world. Yeah, that was you know uh, it, you know, some might think it you know business and you know and 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 whatever. And then and then, but what your mother teaches you is Torah. Mm -hmm. Now, not yeah. the way that we normally use the word Torah, um, but there it's guidance. That, you know, right. that's, yeah. uh, right? Um, yeah. And many of the commentators talk uh, uh, about, the, the make the difference of that the Musar is action and the Torah is speech. That the father teaches action, the, and the mother teaches speech. But again, this is this is all yeah. all subject to our own interpretation in life. Mm -hmm. In life, but uh, I, I I like especially what you know what Mary suggested of the you know that you make sure that you hold tight to it, that you you know don't uh, don't give it away. Okay. Then how do we read how do we read nine? They are a fair garland for your head, graceful wreath upon your head, and a necklace around your throat. Hmm. Okay. Is that is that uh, like jewelry? Is that adding to adding to beauty, your or is it so, is it something else? A metaphor. It's a, a metaphor for what? Grace, what? There's a hand up there. Okay, so I, I'm i seeing that, you know, for they are a grace, they, meaning both parents, correct? Not mm -hmm. one or the other. Okay. A graceful wreath upon your head, a necklace about your throat. Um, and looks as though that you know, the wreath upon your head, that they should remain in your mind always. That wreath 
upon your head a graceful wreath and a necklace about your throat. Um, I'm not real sure how to interpret the use of the word throat other than an adornment, maybe something beautiful to look at. And, you know, well, it's also it's also your neck. It's yeah, the same word for throat right. or neck. Yeah. yeah. That's all I have. OK, Lori, go ahead. Um, I'm just thinking like graceful wreath on your head. Um, that kind of thing is wearing a beautiful ornament. They're they're a positive influence in your life. Their their teachings especially are are this ornament that will make you better, like a crown made a king or queen. You know, they put them on and it was special um victory honor accomplishment. But the necklace thing, I think it's <coughs> also some valuable and personal, worn close to the heart, I think more important than neck. Um, I'm thinking parents aren't giving information for show, but meant to be internalized and carried with you through your life, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm I'm curious about uh, and again uh, Rabbi Miri and and Steve would, can catch with the Hebrew that that this is as something that a, a, accompanies you Olivia chen uh, of grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, grace. You know why why of of all the different things why you know grace will will we're playing on your name too but. You know, but but why is it so? If if you have, uh, you know, if you if you accept and maintain and and continue uh, distinctively with these the these these gifts and these skills that that you've gotten from your father and from your mother, that will give you grace. How, and grace isn't necessarily a word that we hear a lot, at least in English, in in Jewish thinking. Okay. So so my question is what does that what is that what does that mean? What's a you know like a garland of grace or a, a headdress of 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 grace? Uh, I mean I can understand if it said and here and you're gonna wear something on your head or around your neck that uh, you know, like I'm wearing a, I, I, I wear a high around my neck, or I wear this little uh, necklace that has my my grandchildren's names and the, things like that, or sp specifically that designates that here, uh, if you're wearing this particular thing, that's a, it's a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean to say that it's that it's a symbol of grace? Is it like, like what? Okay, Grace, go ahead. Connection of the name, you get to go first. Well, thank you. I was listening to everyone, and I think I now see a continuation of discipline and honorable actions from the heart with this whole verse nine. Because, you know, it, your father's always going to be uh, somebody you look up to, hopefully even Adonai, you know, and so for me, especially the continuation of the discipline that you may have learned for yourself towards others and the, now that I know it's a, a necklace, um, the idea of honorable actions that will come from the heart. So the language of the heart is something I'm seeing in this now. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I'm seeing. I don't think you could be totally wrong. A continuation of that. Right. So the, okay. the idea is to continue these behaviors that are honorable because you got them from your parents. Humility. Yeah. Well. yeah. Humility, okay. wisdom, kindness, loving kindness, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. the All right. And again, and... Um, Again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the other um, 
uh, conceptions of this is that it's not only parent, child, teacher, student, it's also God and human beings. And chen is one of the attributes of God. So this kind of ties it together that if indeed you accept and you remember all of these lessons from your parents, you now can wear these symbols of chen, of, of it goes back to the fear of God or the awe of God, of the you know uh, respect or understanding of, of God. Um, what a lot of people don't remember, I didn't at first, I had to double look it up, is that the same phrase describing the um uh uh the 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 headdress if you if if you will um uh, is used to describe the high uh, joseph oh. oh joseph daniel also but that's later but but is to, to joseph when he when the when the pharaoh you know gives him you know gives him things to wear to sh that so that he'll he will be honored by all the egyptians uh, things like that, the similar kind of phrase. So that's that's there too. Please, please, Mary. Well, I I think the word hen also is about yofi, beauty. Yes, beauty. Can't be. Yeah. So and and the head, I think it could be the thoughts, and the throat is the words. So if you have beauty, based on following the parents in your head, in your thoughts, and in what you say, um, that's, that's that they should be like, uh, it's like the totafot, the- uh, The front, frontlets. Yes. Yeah, the, 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 the in phylacteries. In your that, eyes, uh, right. Uh -huh. So it's something to bear in your head and in what you say, it's going to be, um, a stone calls it adornment. So it's right. something that came to mind. Okay. Okay. Um, let's let's continue. Ten through um, through twelve. <coughs> Pardon me. Ten through this ten is through Steve. twelve. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Hi, Steve. This is Steve. Yeah, I can hear yes. you. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Uh, this is Steve. Yes. yes. Oh. We can I hear you. I don't think he can hear us. Well, maybe not. I know. I know that he's in the cars going somewhere. We should just. We love you, Steve. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Let's let's try let's try you know if we get them we get them. Let's try ten yeah. through ten through twelve. All right. I, I, okay. my, my son, if sinners entice you, do not yield. If they say, "Come with us," let us set an ambush to sh shed blood. Let us lie and wait for the innocent without cause. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive. Whole like those who go down into the pit. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Ugh. Teenagers. <laughs> what, are we, what are we what are we telling them? <laughs> Don't resist the temptation to follow bad people or people doing yeah. bad. Right. Right. Okay. You know, don't, don't follow. There's the, the, the quote from Pirkei Avot is don't follow the majority to do evil. You know, yeah. don't follow the large group. Peer pressure. Yeah. There are the peer pressure with 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 all yeah. these things on the mobile phone now with reality shows and all that. Oh yes, yeah. oh yes, <laughs> oh oh choosing yes. Okay. Wisely choosing companions wisely, and that is I would include in that TV and radio. You know, what oh yeah, read, not just the people choosing your your. What you intake, your companions, wisely. Your social media, yeah. What do you think? No? I think um, teenagers have a, a are from a different planet. 
Uh, I think we were all on that planet at some point. Oh, at, right. some, at, exactly. at some point, right, right. <laughs> um, well. But so here's, I, I mean, I, I think we can we can all relate to the to the most basic understanding of the verse. Oh yeah. But if the writer is going to start talking about do's and don'ts. Why is this one number one? Why is this the first one that he or she, the writer, the you know, the the author, the editor, chooses? Why do we start with this? Hmm. Uh, this can cause addiction uh, throughout life if you're with the with the wrong elements or. Yeah. Get on drugs or something. Yeah. Well, it's a boundary, and he's the the Bible, whatever is the the phrase, the Proverbs is is sending setting a boundary, and it's a preventative measure against acting, you know, being with the wrong people or like the last thing said, be doing the wrong things, being drawn toward the wrong or not. Uh, yeah, you know, we need to turn away from evil, kind of stuff. That kind of. Mm -hmm. thing. Is it is it possible that? I, I mean, just looking at the six, seven of us, every single one of us understood exactly what this was talking about. So, is it possible that this is pre this was so prevalent even then? that it it was the easy you know when you're when you're starting for those of us who have background in, in education or in parenting uh you know you you start with the, the most obvious right mm -hmm. you, you start yeah. with with something that everyone can understand we've all been there yeah. we've on 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 both sides either trying to convince so oh come along with us it's okay it's only a minor little thing it's only a little white lie you know or uh, whatever whatever it might be or on the other on the other side or no i i want to stand my ground uh when everyone else is going in a different direction well i th i think also probably one of the first things that well we'll say adolescents or pubescent kids go through is wanting to belong to the group, to their peers. Right. So that's the, you know, very first thing that's, you know, when their hormones start hitting and, you know, once they realize mom and dad are just people, they, they want to belong with others, you know. The in, they want to be part of the in-group. I, I understand, and I, I think in relation, Relation to that, the, the the compelling nature of that is very strong, and it's probably supported by the parents. At least it was in my house. And by saying that we have a power of choice, that we can choose who we are with, who we consent to, what we consent to do, who we consent to do it with, is a very Jewish and strong uh, lesson. I know we were taught that as young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, the 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 phrase doesn't say be careful, be cautious, following your friends <laughs> or following your colleagues. It's following or, or, you know, it, it it specifically says the you know the um, the the, sinners. Uh, the, chataim, the sinners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In yeah. other words, people who you know are doing wrong go ahead grace is it possible it reminds me of, well i don't know if it's possible or not that it reminds me of that statement um guilty by association so if you're going to associate yourself with these people when especially in the um 12th verse like shale so don't be guilty by association is what I'm I'm thinking. Oh, because the punish the punishment is just as dire? 
Mm -hmm. Yes. You're aiding and abetting. Okay. And avoiding a slippery slope. <laughs> okay. You know, the, you know, if you do a little lying, you do more lying, that kind of thing. You know, but the, I mean, that's yeah. the... So we'll, we'll have to see what the advice is going to be, mm -hmm. right? But is it, ju is it just stay away, remove yourself, or is it try to convince them not to sin? All I'm seeing is stay away in this. I have another statement. Go ahead. Okay, so this is something my father taught me. Um, keep your friends and family close and your enemies closer. Yeah. So, like, know, know your enemy. For uh, what reason that might pertain, you know, is that it's like the game of chess. You're going to predict the next three to five moves. And I think that if we have enemies in this world, which so I have experienced, they've taught me something. So you can even you can even learn from the negative or the difficult situations. Correct. But I do think an answer to why it's first is because it sets a boundary. It starts. Mm -hmm. That's. That boundaries of uh, unambiguous moral considerations. I don't know um, what is good and what is bad. Righteousness. Okay. I don't know. Interpersonal reactions. Yeah, boundaries to yeah. There you go. What's right? What's wrong? Knowing that. Okay. Okay. All right. The next two phrases, however, yeah. still continue with the assumption that this person, this child, this student, whomever, is still being tempted. And we kind of kind of need further, you know, further instruction and further warning. You're going to go down the pit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, uh, you well, know, it's still uh, the evil person talking. It's still, it's still the evil person talking. You know, if they say, and it's the evil person, right? Oh no, it's still part yeah. of the. It's part of the it's same. Part exactly. of the same mashal. Part of the same, you know, aphorism and 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 truism. That right. um, you know, if if you know, there's a comment here that if if you think you're smart enough to get away with anything. You know, you might you might think that you're smart enough to get away with something as 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 drastic as murder. Yeah. Oh, and right. yeah. make sure that you make sure that you know what the uh, uh, you know what the punishment is for murder. You're going in down to Sheol, into the grave, into the nether world, also. But you're going whole and alive, which is very un-Jewish, right? Uh huh. <laughs> like really bad. Isn't it, Norm? I, don't know. I mean, that's what I think. It's like worse than because it's alive. It's not a consecrated, you know, you're not dying in honor. You're dying in ignominy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's more, uh, what's the, what's the, it's, it's more purgatory. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If we were. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm looking at one of the, um, um, one of the more more classical translations uh, about Sheol. The word is often <laughs> translated as the netherworld uh, or Hades in the Greek, the region uh. popularly believed to be under the earth to which the spirit descends after leaving the body and it continues in a shadowy existence. Yeah. Wow. Purgatory. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know what, Rabbi Norm, uh, the word Sheol comes and comes and comes. And all the translations, I mean, I don't buy on any uh, purgatory or, you know, just a limbo or whatever it is, or 
או גהנום, those are very difficult words for us, I think. Because basically we don't believe in that. I mean, let me, I don't believe in that. And I think that in Judaism, we don't have that. Even if we say Gehenna, it's, it's difficult. So the word Sheol is problematic. And, Very. Uh, uh, I agree, agree, agree completely. It's just that we encounter the term. We, right. we see it here. We see it a lot in the Psalms, uh, uh, you know, yeah. whatever it is. It obviously was a strong reference point for the biblical authors. Yeah. And everybody knew what they were talking about. It, yeah. It may not be part of our thinking or belief patterns yeah. today, but it was then. And what we can say, because of the parallelism, we have the word pit. We have the word going down the pit. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, for sure, is somewhere down underground. Right. Okay. And it doesn't have a negative or positive connotation in terms of person's actions, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's not like going to hell in Christianity. It's it's no, no. It's, it's where people go when they die. I mean, it's where. You know the, what? Yeah. What they say. Well, I don't remember if it was. One of our father's uh, ancestors used to say, and I'll go uh, with, with uh, pain Sheola to Sheol. That's, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's just, it's going to kill me. <laughs> like it's, the next, it's the next step after the body's death. Yeah. Yeah, but what, whatever, whatever, that, whatever that meant. Right. Okay. Um, the, um, some of the other commentaries, uh, you know, focus on the fact that again, as we said, uh, like I said, with the, with the, with the peer pressure, why are they starting with that? And then on the other hand, why are they using murder? Okay. And, yeah. and, and, and so that, so this commentary, which is a, a more, uh, more modern contemporary commentator says, look, it, they want to start by, and, and, and Lori was saying the boundaries, and this commentator is saying by starting with the extremes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the easiest way of getting in trouble is by following, uh, you know, following others, the peer pressure. The, mo the most difficult is going to be, or the most, the most painful and destructive is if you get into a position where they're even considering murder yeah yeah okay yeah. So, so you know and, and then the reality is going to be that we all live in lives that are in the middle you know we know what the black and white is it but we're we all have we every day we have these decisions that are all in the gray and that's and and that's where we have to look to the fear of god and the musar and the and the bina and the chokhmah and the seichel etc 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 Okay. All right. That's 10, 10 through 12. All right. Um, 13 through, where did I break it down here? 13 through, 14. no, 13 through 19. 13 to 19, is it? 13 through 19. All right, we shall obtain every precious treasure. We shall fill our homes with loot. Throw in your lot with us, we shall all have a common purse. My son, do not set out with them. Keep your feet from their path, for their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood in the eyes of every winged creature. The outspread net means nothing, but they lie in ambush for their own blood. They lie and wait for their own lives. Such is the fate of all who pursue unjust gain. It takes the life of its possessor. Mm. Oh, that's okay. Does anybody have some different translations there? I have a little uh, JPS. Uh, that's the JPS. Yeah, and okay. It's just we will uh, we with spoil. We will find all precious goods. We shall find all kinds of costs. 
It's just a little, there are a couple different words. It's basically the same thing. Well, I have another one here. We shall find all kinds of costly things. We shall fill our houses with booty. Throw in your lot among us. Uh, we all we will all have one purse. My mm -hmm. child, do not walk in their way. Keep your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil and they hurry to shed blood. For in vain is the net baited while the bird is looking on. <laughs> Yet they lie in wait to kill themselves and set an ambush for their own lives. Such is the end of all who are greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. Yeah. Let's see the greedy person. I like the 17, um, how useless to spread a net in the sight of any bird. I just think that's really pretty. <laughs> Sooner or later, one way or another, those who commit murder or sin suffer for their offense. Right. Let no one think that he or she is smart enough to get away with murder and escape. It's not that criminals do things because they want to get caught. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather, it's the act itself that becomes the trap in which they are snared. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, does it seem like, I had a note somewhere, I've got too many pieces of paper here with yeah. notes now. Um, it, does it seem like it's referring only uh, to um, uh, that, well, let's put it this way. There's two things. That white collar crime, if you will, yeah. um, is, is a step towards you know, that you can, if you can get away with white collar crime, you'd be more tempted to try to get away with with murder as the as the as the extreme. That's one one question that it seems to be saying. And on, yeah. the, on the other is, are they only talking about when uh, uh, again back to the peer pressure thing of of following the multitude to do evil, following others? Or is is <laughs> when when the evil deed is impulsive, is not something that's been premeditated. Ooh. Seems to seems to me that they're talking about, you know, like the like the phrase in like in sixteen, uh, um, they make haste. And, you know, it's like uh, it, it it's like it's 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 impulsive behavior. Huh. Yeah. But I, again, I don't know if it's only in, I don't no, know if it's only okay. in that one verse or if it's or if we think well, that's more generalized. I think what I'm, I'm hearing you say, or maybe it's what I'm reading here. First, they're just dealing. You know, fill our house with a loot, and then we'll all have a common for, uh, purse. So now we're a, a band of hoodlums. My son, do not set out with them. Keep your feet from their path, for their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood. So they started out just being robbers or burglars, and in their trying to get away with it, um, somebody, I guess, sees them and they murder as their way to get out. I mean, it's the escalation of the crime, so to speak, is what I'm seeing there. I'm just, let's see, what is this? And then, I'm thinking and then you know, then you go on from there. For in vain, when in, in the eyes of every woman who preach, they are spread net means nothing. For they lie in ambush for their own blood. Um, the ambush shows it's not impulsive. Right, it's not impulsive. The ambush, I think ambush says that it's, it's not impulsive. Right. Okay. It's premeditated. Yeah, I agree. In 12... And yet another translation of 17. Uh, for in vain is the net baited while the bird is looking on. I don't understand. Um, yet they lie in wait to kill themselves and set an ambush for their own lives. 
I don't understand 17 at all. Can I make the, a turn? The, um, the bird doesn't think that that, you know, that that net or that trap is, is, is for. Yeah, even a bird would understand a trap. is whatever, you know, oh. says, oh, they won't catch me. That, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 I'm smarter, I'm smarter than, you know, it's the, it's, it's the roadrunner who can always get away from the, <laughs> you know, from, from the trap, right? Okay. These sinners act against their best interests often. These sinners act against, so don't be a sinner who acts, acts. Well, against, even violence. though, even though they've told, even though they've said to you, hey, if you join with us, we're going to share all the loot. Right. So, you, you, you know, you can participate fully, even though you're a novice and, you know, and whatever, whether they try to tempt you and tempt you and tempt you, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. John, you kind of look like you, you're, you're ready to say something. No? Oh, no. I just think oh. of this like they're organized criminal gangs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the problem with the these people that are, you know, doing the sex trade and the drugs and, you know, organized crime criminals. So I kind of look at, like these patches refer to, you know, folks like that on, on one side. And then, you know, you were talking about the, uh, the white crime and, you know, you know, that has to deal with probably the, the big shots. We see them, uh, you know, companies, government, you know, a lot of hanky panky for their own interest, you know, so and they think that they, they and they think they always think that they can get away with it. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing a lot of that. <laughs> but the issue also of recruitment, which is uh, a very crucial thing here that we see. Okay, look what we are going to give you, and it's try. I mean, it's, oh yeah, yeah, it's an active act, an active act. Of recruitment is not that you're going to fall into that. Uh, pay attention. Agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Long. Here's here's a long here's a long section of, as we finish as we finish um, chapter one. So it's twenty through thirty three. Wow. Well, you want me to continue? Does somebody else want sure, to? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, Ricky. That's all right. Oh, okay. no, let me put this book away. Okay. <laughs> I have two. Wisdom cries aloud in the streets, raises her voice in the squares. At the head of the busy streets, she calls. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she speaks out. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? You scoffers be eager to scoff. You dullards hate knowledge. You are indifferent to my rebuke. I will now speak my mind to you and let you know my thoughts. Since you refused me when I called and paid no heed when I extended my hand, you spurned all my advice and would not hear my rebuke. I will laugh at your calamity and mock when terror comes upon you when terror comes like a disaster and calamity arrives like a whirlwind. When trouble and distress come upon you, then they shall call me by me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me, but not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose fear of the Lord, they refused my advice and disdained all my rebukes. They shall eat the fruit of their ways and have their fill of their own counsels. The tranquility of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of the dullard will destroy them. But he who listens to me will dwell in safety, untroubled by the terror of misfortune. Okay. Hmm. All right. Hey, listen up. You know, I think it's it, a it's summary, and it's it's saying, "I told you so." Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 the 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 traditional commentators all work on the statement that chokhmah or wisdom, if you will, is the speaker. So when you go back through it, it's female. Con consider it that you know, chokhmah, wisdom is the subject speaking to you know, anybody who has fallen into the trap 
or anybody who wants to learn what the ultimate la lessons are of that we began with in the entire chapter. Wisdom is close, not something distant and far away. Wisdom is not only close. Wisdom is wisdom is Jiminy Cricket on your you know on your on your shoulder. Another okay? one. You know, uh, we, what, what do we call it? The conscience, if you know, if, if, if you uh -huh. will, is telling you the Yetzer Hatov, you know, it's the, the, you know, the, um, uh, the inclination, uh, the, 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 the good impulse. And if you enjoy if you listen to Jiminy, your nose won't grow long. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think that's in here. In, in, in. <laughs> that's, in the, that's in the Disney oh, book. Long, Roberts, right. Long. Right. <laughs> okay, so so going back through it again, Ricky. Let's go back through it again, but but read it read it a little bit slowly. Okay. That that chokma, you know, or or uh, actually it's chokmot the way in in verse twenty, uh, it, they do it in the plural. But it's okay, plural, yeah. But all right. But wisdom wisdom cries out. Like a loud. Wisdom is calling. Okay. Wisdom cries aloud in the streets raises her voice in the squares. At the head of the busy streets, she calls. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she speaks out. How okay, now, these... now there's, there, what, I just want to, I want to throw out a couple of things, okay? Um, um, look, one of the, <coughs> one of the modern commentaries that I found reads into it and I'm not sure exactly where they they start with the commentaries here but they say kind of watch for the um the underlying lesson of wisdom this which is to derive instruction from the past because the future is going to mimic the past you know, it's like those who those who forget the past are de are destined to, yeah, to, repeat, to repeat it. it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so yeah. they're they're saying when when you read this when you study this, okay, uh, assume that there's a certain continuity with life. One can derive instruction from the past precisely because the future will mim mimic it. What has happened before will happen again. The future will echo the past. The writer of Proverbs certainly knew, just as the writer of Ecclesiastes, who traditionally said was Solomon also, says, Ein chadash tachadash There's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So so that's that's the underlying. I stopped you in 21, Ricky, but that's the underlying lesson that, yeah, but that Lori's they, got her hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, I just want to say, yeah. I feel like it also emphasizes that wisdom's available to everybody who wants it. It's on the streets crying out. She's yep. letting it be known. So it's yep. available. It's not. It hidden. is not. It is not hidden. It's it. It's out there. Whether it's in the street, meaning in your pedestrian life, yeah. you know, if you will, it's it's um, the voice is out there. Just have to you have to tune it in. To turn on the ear the earphones, right? Okay. Yeah, but in in Kabbalah, wisdom is what the top three that you don't get to was um, Chokmah, Bina, and uh, Peter. Is it the same? Seven as lower as ones that uh, I think the it's humans. A different wisdom. Huh? Uh huh. Maybe it's a different wisdom than Kabbalah. Well, he's using the same. Oh, that's that's one. No, it's the same no. wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Is this is the the uh, related uh, to. To yeah. Yira yeah. and the fear of God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All okay. Right. So, so, so now again. So it's so, an okay. So that's through twenty one. Now start with twenty two. Right. Again, wisdom is speaking. Right. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? You scoffers be eager to scoff. You dullards hate knowledge. You are indifferent to my rebuke. I will now speak my mind to you and let you know my thoughts. Since you refused me when I called and paid no heed when I extended my hand, you spurned all my advice and would not hear my rebuke. I will laugh at your calamity and mock when terror comes upon you, when terror okay. comes like a disaster and calamity arrives like a whirlwind, when trouble and distress come upon you. 
Then they shall call me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me, but not find me. Because okay, hang, they... on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Hang on. The, one, the one thing, again, the, the, some of the commentators point out, because, and, 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 and it's an interesting question, they, do, they don't answer it. They just raise the question. Right. Why is there no reference to teshuva? Right. Okay, to, to repentance, mm -hmm. to changing behavior. It, you, would, you would think that, you know, I called you, you, but you refused. I stretched out my hand. You weren't, you weren't listening. You rejected my advice. All you had to do was make, to, you know, change your ways, make teshuva, da 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 da, da. It's not here. It reminds me of like the the Congress people who vote against a bill, but then when they have an emergency or something they need the money for that the bill was about, they take full credit and you sure. know, hooray, hooray, and they want, you know, that that's <laughs> what it reminds me of. I don't know. Just you know, re re revise it. Okay. Right. You know, so I mean it's it's it, it's a question and um I, I don't know the answer. I'm not. I'm not telling, saying that I do. But is you have to look at some of the other literature from the same time or from Solomon, if indeed Solomon is the is the primary writer. In other sources, does he talk about teshuva? Does he talk about repentance? And I believe the answer is no. Solomon Solomon does not. Solomon. It just it wasn't well, part of his wasn't part of his mindset, if you will. Miri, feel free to contradict. Yeah, uh, what's going? I mean, the, even the language it's so familiar is from the uh, prophets, you know. Uh, and the last line here that we didn't read, it's not exactly tshuva, but it's solution. It says which which verse are you talking about? The last one in, uh, which is... Uh, that I just read? 28? We didn't uh, read the last one. Oh, we didn't. Sorry. Sorry. So keep reading. Yeah, we stopped at 28. Well, anyway, in the last one, it says, and the one that listens to me is going to be fine. So right. it's not what you need to do. Well, the only thing you need to do is listen to me. And do what I say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it, right. What I say, not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so prophetic. It's so, even the words, I mean, I know that most people don't know Jeremiah or Isaiah, but, you know, or Amos, it's it's so similar wording yeah. that it's... it's <laughs> okay. And, I don't know who wants fail, who was on first. Probably this. Mm. Should I continue with 29? Um, well, unless somebody has a... Oh, I, was, I wanted to point out something in 27. Okay. What's your translation of 27? When terror comes like disaster and calamity arrives like a whirlwind, when trouble and distress come upon you, then they shall call me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me, but not find me. Okay. So the terror, mm -hmm. the terror, I think, is what you said. Yeah, when the terror comes 27? like a, yeah. Yep. Okay. That's the Hebrew word shoah. Shoah. Okay. okay. Which which we use as Holocaust. Yeah. Okay. Let me just, okay, well, that's 27. Let me see what that's this 27. one is. And I don't recall seeing that yeah. word anywhere else. I got another translation. When panic strikes you like a storm, they got they okay, use and, panic and, instead and this of this translation is dread. Yeah, I have yeah. calamity. Yeah. And disaster. All right, right, right. Okay. Using you the you this is this commentary using such a strong word, the writer. <laughs> makes the point that the very anticipation of disaster intensifies its horror. What happens to fools is a consequence of their own folly. 
not paying attention to the experience of wisdom. When trouble comes, it's too late to get smart. Wisdom warns ahead of time. Wisdom warns ahead of time. Wisdom personified responds, when you call me, I won't answer if you haven't, you know, if you haven't paid attention to me. But not God. Forewarned is forearmed. But but that's not God speaking. That's wisdom. That's not God speaking. That's chokhmah. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Okay. I think that stone has a very interesting translation, and it calls darkness. Dark it for Shoah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So then, we're, we stopped at twenty-eight. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-nine. Uh -huh. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose fear of the Lord, they refused my advice and disdained all my rebukes. They shall eat the fruit of their ways and have their fill of their own counsels. The tranquility of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of dullards will destroy them. But he who listens to me will dwell in safety, untroubled by the terror of misfortune. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just do it. Just, <laughs> just, uh -huh. just uh -huh. do it. The yeah. uh, and the um, uh, the what the writer has done is taken in verse thirty-one. They shall eat the fruit of their ways. Yeah, this okay. looks like it jumped out at me. Yeah. And yeah, that's well. That's that's a play on that's a play on words from the phrase that's in the Torah, and it's also in the Birkat Hamazon, Achalta v'Savata, that you that you that you eat until you, and you are satisfied. You know, it's what so it's whatever you know that you that you that you think that's the only thing that you need to do is eat and be in, eat and be satisfied. The wicked will suffer the results of their own wickedness. They harvest what they plant. They will eat and be filled with the results of their own plans. The evil they plan for others will come down, sit on their own heads, so to speak. According to this, we believe in the the, the actions have consequences. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's 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 ultimately one of the lessons that wisdom Chochma is trying to teach that there are consequences. Right. Right. Okay. And that's a value yeah. that we have. That's a Jewish. You know, yeah. And so in and, and so, but thirty what do we learn from thirty-two and thirty-three? The tranquility the, of the simple will kill them and the complacency of the dullards will destroy them. So who who is bringing who or what is bringing the consequences that we're talking about? They're bringing it on themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. This, this is not a theolo This is not a theological statement of that. There's divine retribution. Right. They're just going right. to mess this up. This is right. This is this is human ethical behavior, <laughs> and which Horrible. is another you know another definition then of the chokma and bina. And Musar and whatever that you know to to evaluate self pride in your personal and your yeah. personal behavior. That's the that's the ultimate uh, you know lesson of the wisdom, if you will, in chapter one. Yeah. We have to see if it, we have to see if it continues. Dun, da, dun, Grace is that a dun. Grace is that a question? Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> muted. No, okay, got it. All right, so we will, we will, we we finished chapter one. I thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll head into chapter two next time. Okay. okay. Uh, two weeks from today, same time, same place on yes. Zoom. Uh -huh. Well, I won't be in the same place. I'm going to be in. Where am I going to be? Somewhere uh -huh. in New York State. I'm not sure exactly where. But, uh -huh. uh, no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to be. I'm going to be in Phoenix, having just gotten off an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> How delightful! Right. Yeah, right. right. That's the it's the it's the end of the grandparenting duties for a while. 
for a while. Okay. All right. So I wish everyone well. Thank you. And we'll see Thank, Thank you, you for Rabbi. participating. We'll see you in two weeks.